If there was anything we learned from 2020, it's that products sometimes aren't available. So what do you do if you have a stove that runs on this type of gas, but all you can get is this type of gas? Well, today, I'm going to show you a product that can help you out with that. This is the Lixata Gas Saver Tank Filler and Conversion Adapter. All right, everybody, welcome back. So I wanted to show you this product. Um, I actually saw this product demoed on Jiu-Jitsu 2000's page um, on his channel, and I said, wow, that's something I definitely need. Because <laughs> um, I'm thinking about, you know, I have a lot of things that run on isobutane, and during the whole thing during last March when the stores were pretty much empty, you could not buy a can of isobutane. Now, I have a lot stored, but that doesn't mean it didn't get me thinking about what happens if I go to the store one day and I've used up all of mine and I can't refill it? Well, what I got here is not only an adapter, but a refiller for all of these products. Say I want to take this propane and put it into that isobutane canister when it's empty, I can do that now. So what this is, is a very inexpensive alternative and a budget-friendly alternative to the G-Works Gas Saver Plus. Plus, it's got a bunch of other features along with it. With the G-Works Plus, all you're really going to get, and I have to unscrew this, so forgive me unscrewing it while I talk to you, uh, the only thing you're really going to get is this middle piece right here that allows you to take an isobutane canister and refill it with another isobutane canister. And that's cool, but this allows you a whole bunch more options, as well as adapters for your stove. Um, let's say I run out of these, and uh, this one's damaged. It's got a hole in it. I can't refill it. Well, I can take this with this adapter for the butane fuel here and run it on a Lindell valve and run a stove on it. Now I know I've done a video on something similar to this before but this is the whole package. If you don't want to just buy this you get the whole package together. Let's say I want to run my propane stove on something that uses a Lindell valve. Well I can do that. Now a word of caution. This piece here does not shut off. Okay? When you screw this in it will just blow gas everywhere. So before you do that of course what you want to do is put this on here, like this, and then connect it to your Lindell valve for your stove. Now, there, is, there have been some questions in the past when I've done videos like this on the safety. It's perfectly safe to run stuff on these different fuels. You may not get as an efficient flame, but you'll get fire. You can boil water. Everything's good. But it's perfectly safe to run an isobutane stove on propane. It's not going to explode on you or cause any problems. I've done it many, many times. So trust me, if it was bad, I'd know already. So the makeup of all these products are aluminum alloy and copper. So it's corrosion resistant, it's long lasting, you can have a good long service life out of this stuff. And it's very, very practical for, say, especially these kind of containers. If I go out and I have to carry two half and full ones, well, it doesn't make much sense is to take one half full one, put it in here and make it a full one. And we'll explain how to do that in a second. That's the one I'm actually going to refill because it's very, very low right now. You can kind of hear some gas in there because I was experimenting with this and I put a little butane in. This was empty. So we'll show you how to do that in a second. So you can take something like, uh, hey, I got a picture here for you. Your uh, butane and put it into your propane bottle. Okay? You can take a little smaller isobutane and put it into propane. You can take your butane and fill it up with that. And you can also take your butane to isobutane to isobutane and fill them up as well. I just wanted to print this out so you can get an idea of the different configurations because for me to do them all in different configurations would be kind of difficult. What I am going to do is show you how to run a stove with the adapters and then we're going to refill that and I'm going to show you the correct way to do it. Some people want you to use a scale. I can tell you how to get it fairly close to using a scale but not, you know, weighing out and knowing the exact weight of the gas inside. So, let's start off with running a stove on butane that was meant for a Lindell valve, and I'll show you how that works. All right, so in this scenario, our isobutane canister, let's say the only one we have left has been damaged. Uh, we can't refill it. We've got to run this on a different thing. So we're going to run it on butane. This is very, very simple to use. I'm going to unhook it there. There we go. You're going to put this on top here. You'll snap that piece into the, into the hole there. Push down. Sorry, I'm off camera. There we go. You just push down and turn. That's simple. Then you're going to connect this. Now you can connect this ahead of time. I just did it kind of that way to show you how it works. I'm just going to screw this on here. And I'm not sure if the piezo igniter works on this, but we'll find out in a second. If not, I have a, uh, a lighter over here that I can use. Let's see. There we go. So I'm going to turn this on just a little bit. 
and there you go. I'm running it on the uh, butane fuel here. Really, really easy. So, you got that there. You can do that. Now let's try it with the propane and the propane adapter. Alright, so in this scenario, we've got our isobutane stove, but we're out of anything that can run it. All we can find are these green bottles, these one pound bottles. Now remember, I told you that if you use the adapter here, this is going to leak. It'll drain your entire bottle out and you'll have absolutely nothing in there. And it can create a very dangerous situation too. So what you want to do is you want to connect this Lindell valve to your stove ahead of time. This way, this is your regulator. You want to make sure it's fully off. It's still going to hiss a little bit and have some gas leak out. But it won't be anywhere near as bad as if you just put it on and then try to put the Lindell valve on top while it's spewing gas everywhere. You can hear it kind of spewing a little gas there. So let's air that out. <laughs> I don't want to get that near it. Okay, light it up. Whoop. There we go. And as you can tell, that's a much more... There's really no middle ground with that because it's going so fast on it. So you either get a very, very high or a very, very low flame. Kind of shocked me when it popped on. But it does work and it will, you will be able to use it. You'll be able to use it just on high. Um, I believe that's probably because this thing is not regulated at all and you're using only this to regulate it. And these tend to wear out over time or get touchy. But you see it does work very, very well. So let's move on to the next part. I want to show you how to transfer between two of these here. I have a larger one and that one that's almost empty. And we'll uh, figure that out. All right, so we're back, and I'm going to show you how to take this big one and fill up this one that's got very little fuel in it right now. Um, you can weigh it out. What you want to do is, the first thing you want to do is find your gross weight, okay? Next, you're going to measure, measure the canister here on a scale. So you can see this is a 250-gram unit, and let's see what we got in there. I, you probably can't see the scale. I can barely see it from here. About 201 grams. So it's missing 49 grams of fuel. That's its gross weight. You don't want to overfill these. Um... Generally, one or two grams over is not going to bother you, but if you start getting them too full, there's a possibility the bottom could blow out, they could pop on you, and you definitely don't want that. And I'm not going to fill this up fully. I'm just going to show you how it works. Again, this is something I would do in an emergency situation. Right now, times are relatively plentiful. I can go to the store and I can buy another one of these. I'm not going to risk filling one up, you know, and messing around with it in normal times. However, if I have two of these left on my counter and they're both like three quarters full, I might fill one up totally and take it with me camping instead of having to take two with me, wondering if one's going to run out before the other. So this is a good way to do it. We know this is 250. It's about 201 on there. So what I'm going to do, and I'm going to show you this again here. This is your valve on the side here. I don't know if you can see that on the camera because my monitor is really small, but there's an out and an in. The out is where you want to put your bigger canister. That's coming out. You'll notice a big, big thing into a small thing, like a big pressure into a small can. That's what you want to do. Now, in order to have a good transfer, you want to get the temperature a little bit down on this one. You want temperature difference between the two. It's probably about 89 degrees in here right about now, maybe 85. I'm going to put this in the freezer for a few minutes, not long, just to have it a little bit lower than the other. And then we're going to come back and I'm going to show you how to transfer over and we'll weigh it and see how it came out. All right, so it was in there for about 15 minutes. It's nice and cold now. We're going to put the in on here, like this, like so. Make sure it's closed up. We're going to put the out up here on top. This fills very, very quickly. I've used this in the past. These fill very quickly. So you want to be careful. You want to take it off and measure it a little bit at a time each time and measure it and see how you're doing. Okay, we're going to turn it on. Leave off a little bit of the air in there. There we go. You can hear it going in there. So bleeding off a little bit of the air. That's a little bit of gas, too. And we're letting it go in there and fill up. So what we're going to do is let it fill up for a few minutes, bring you back, and we're going to show you how much heavier it is. All right, so we're all set. We've got this nice and full. There we go. 261, a little bit over. I won't lose any sleep over that 12, 12 ounce, 12 grams over. Really not all that bad, but you see how easy that is to do. Now again, refilling these isn't necessarily always safe. You want to be very, very careful when doing it. You want to do it outside. You know, I have my side door open here and my garage door open a little bit too, so I got cross ventilation. I don't want the smell of the 
you know, the, the vapors of the propane and the gases to build up in here too much. But you see, it's very, very safe to do um, if you're careful. I don't want people to do this and then put the wrong gases in and make a mess. This is fairly easy to do. You just have to be careful with it and know what you're doing. So, all in all, I think it's a very worthwhile product. I mean, this alone from Gas Saver is like, I think, $35 or $39. And if you want to just buy the gas adapter, I think it's 9 The whole kit together with all three adapters over there is $12.99. That's a really good deal, especially being able to run your stoves. Even if you never mix the butane into this or whatever, if you never do that, you're still getting a really, really good deal, you know, just being able to run your stoves on that other stuff very, very easily. So that's definitely a cool deal. $12.99, 13 bucks for all three adapters. And I can tell you for sure I'm going to be using this in here. Um, just for filling up this kind of a, a thing, uh, you know, just to save myself a little hassle. It's a little bit smaller and easier to use. So I will be using this to uh, this system in here, and you'll probably see it in my videos from time to time. Um, recently, I have been using this stove with the butane fuel. Uh, it's just cheaper to buy the butane fuel than to run through these. Um, the butane fuel is very plentiful. You can usually find it in any kind of Asian market. Um, I have an Indian place in Vegas, an Indian market that sells it as well. Um, really, really inexpensive, and uh, this is a little bit more expensive right now. These are running about $4 in Walmart, uh, so, you know, that's why I've been doing it. I've been saving some money, but, um, yeah, very handy tool, very easy way to attach stoves to give you a little more options, and with prepping, options are key. You definitely want to be able to run your stoves off of pretty much anything. You want to be able to maybe refill a canister in an emergency, um, you know, when you don't have, you know, all you have is the other fuel or the, uh, let me move that out of the way, the one pound fuel or this or that. Um, you can fill your canister up if it's empty. Let's say you go to the store, none of these are on the shelf, but those are. Hey, I'm okay now. I know where to get an adapter or I know I have an adapter that can do it. Or I can just run my stove right off it using the adapter alone right into my isobutane stove. So that is the Luxata Gas Saver Plus Tank Filler Conversion Adapter. That's a whole mouthful. Basically, it's a converter as well as a tank filler. Um, you know, I can fill up any kind of fuel in my tanks. I can switch them around, as you saw in the piece of paper I had out before. I wanted to show you that just to show you the different options that there are for filling things up. Down here, real quick, you see all those options and ways to do it. So, definitely a cool little system. Uh, very economical, good way to save money. Again, for me personally, I'd probably go to the store and just buy a new canister. But as we saw last March, Sometimes things aren't available, and you've got to keep on trucking and doing what you've got to do in a survival situation. And now I know I can take that butane canister, or my one-pound propane canister, and fill up my isobutane container and still be able to run my stove. Um, that thing with the, uh, with the one-pound, that was a little, bit, uh, a little bit on the hot side. Definitely ran very, very hot, uh, very, very quick. There was, wasn't much regulation, and that's not because of the stove, because you can see I've run that stove really, really low with its correct canister. I suspect that's because of the butane and the fact that there, this basically is a straight-through valve. There is nothing holding it there. You connect this to a tank and it will spew gas out of the top. So this is what you're relying on for a regulator there. That might be why. Uh, but um, I'd still run it on the, on the butane. So that is it. Very simple item. I will have a link down below where you can pick one up. It's a very inexpensive alternative and an awesome way to have this in your stockpile. Even if you never want to use it, you know, until something happens, I would say test it first. Don't just put it away and say, okay, I got it. Make sure it works, and then you can put it away. Uh, but if you never want to use this until some kind of emergency or disaster strikes and you can't find the correct fuel, that's fine too. I would just say test it. And uh, I definitely like it. It's definitely cool. Luxada has not done me wrong with any product they've ever um, sent me and or I purchased from them. So got to give them a heads up. Got to give them a, a big thumbs up for all of their uh, stuff. It just works. Anyway, folks, like I said, check the link down below for this product here. You get all three for $13. Uh, below that is my Amazon affiliate store. Don't forget to check that out. I got so much in that store right now, and I have four different categories. So you can pretty much see everything that I review. As long as it's on Amazon, you'll find it there, and you can get specs or anything else I may have left out during the, uh, during the video. Don't forget to check out our freeze-dried wholesalers. You saw me yesterday. I had something out here for an entire eight months through the cold and hot freeze-dried food from freeze-dried wholesalers that I just vacuum sealed and it was perfectly good to eat. So that is definitely a plus for them. You can keep it in the original packaging or you can put it in your own packaging and it'll still be okay to eat. Um, no problems. I've never had a problem with freeze-dried food, honestly. I've had stuff for 
10, 15 years and it's never gone bad on me. So really good place to check it out. Plus, if you use my link for freeze dried wholesalers, you'll save 15% just by clicking the link. We have our My Patriots supply down below. That's preparewithiridium.com, preparewithiridium.com. And we have some very good specials on some bigger packages this month. Uh, you can save a lot of money on the larger couple of month type packages. Um, it, it's been flying off the shelf, so obviously people are taking the deal to heart. And our Thrive Life link as well. We have lots of good stuff on our Thrive Life store, so check it out. Anyway, folks, thanks for watching. Stay safe and stay prepared.